reviews, discussions, and theories about films and horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Horror Deconstruction. You'll find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button with your host, Comp, and... Classic Loki. Today's film is... Uh, uh, the Spine of Night 2021. The Spine of Night 2021, which is exclusively on Shudder. Ultra-violent epic fantasy set in a land of magic follows heroes from different eras and cultures battling against a malevolent force. Directed by Philip Gelat and Morgan Galen King. Written by Philip Gelat, or maybe Gallet, I don't know. And Morgan Galen King, starring Richard E. Grant, Lucy Lawless, and Patton Oswalt. So... Hey, he why doesn't did I pick... star in it. I wouldn't say he stars in it. Why did I pick The Spine of Night? Because it's fucking awesome. I don't know. It is, right? This is like this is a movie you could say is metal as fuck. Like, oh it's... yeah, this movie is <clears throat> great. It's it's metal. Like if you you know when you you see like oh you haven't seen like movies like with metal kind of leanings to it like the Northman came out you know I guess but that's mostly like white a white. Oh, this power is thing. definitely metal. <laughs> this is metal. this is metal as fuck. This is like um to compare it to what it's I guess what you can say what it is. Uh, offshoot of is like heavy metal. The movie you remember the heavy metal from the eighties. I don't. Yeah. I saw parts of that movie, but it, it like rotoscoped animation. So Ralph Bakshi like rotoscoped a bunch of movies. If you don't know, what rotoscope is a film act, and then they, they animate. Fil- yeah, they film it and then put the thing over. It. But did they? They filmed all those battle scenes, or they kind of just like loosely filmed it you in this I mean? film in Spine of yeah. Night. Uh, when when you see the amount of people, like <laughs> like the big battle scene is them versus four people. So yeah, I think they filmed all of it like it looked pretty smooth so going back it's like movies like heavy metal um there's a there's a big dark fantasy film called fire and ice that ralph back she did that like i saw mo- a, a lot of it or i probably saw some of it it's mm-hmm. basically like a conan animated film it's f- it's fucking is that frank incredible or whatever? i think it's inspired by frank frazetta i don't know how much he had a a, a part of it maybe a lot of, he had some part of it because there, there's a character in there that looks exactly like another character that he came he came out with there's okay. like a like a, a guy with like the head of a cheetah as a mask and then there's like a regular standard here and then there's this like really sexy woman running around but it's cool just look up fire and ice it's fucking awesome so when i saw the okay. trailer for this a while back so I was kind of thrown off a little bit because I wasn't sure this was going to take itself seriously because it was like, it looks like Adult Swim style of um, art. Well, better than that, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, I, but, no, it yeah. is. I, because when I, for, just by the f- look of the trailer, I was like, oh, this looks kind of cheap. Even though it's rotoscoped, it's like, it's it's scant on sort of character um, details. Uh, I love this kind of animation, though. I it's, do, too. No, I do, too. It reminds me like my childhood. No, I do too. It's just that from the trailer, I was like, "This looks kind of cheap." But when I saw the whole film, I was like, "Wow!" Like it, it was dope. I only had a little, a little problem with the animation myself. It, but this is like very small. Is that there's no shadows on the characters, yeah. and I think probably shadows probably would have took forever because I couldn't tell if this was digitally or hand drawn. I still can't find information. Uh, I think I read that it's digital, but like yeah, because I think it's digital because I rotoscope. hold on, let me. Look. I, I recently saw an animation where they were making fun of, I guess, a game called not not Bloodborne or some some ep fantasy game, where the guy did like this type of animation in real life. Basically, there's there's apps on your computer where you can just act, and then the the computer will trace you art wise. Uh huh. So what I think with this, I think is well, that it says the drawings were created on the computer, but classically okay. at 12 frames per second, as is usual. In rotoscope animation, but you can definitely tell it's digital because just how clean it looks. Because my thought would be that it was done with skins that they put over the actor, but you with skins you, you could only have so much kind of movement with the clothing, and there's movement with the clothing in here. Um, but my biggest thing is that there was no shadow, and never felt like the characters were actually on the frame of where they were. You kind of I I lose that anyway just because I know animation and stuff like that, or I don't know how to do it. I actually but I know like kind of like this kind of animation look. No, I, I do I too. I I grew up because how serious it took itself, and it wasn't like half ass done. Yeah. Uh, my only issues were like the the face. <laughs> there was no like the faces weren't like interesting looking they kind of looked all like hideous looking characters which is fine because they probably were hideous back then in the days mm. um my only t- that was only my only two issues with this film really is that there were no there are but there are no central characters to follow as in like a fantasy this movie feels like 
five shorts put together just like heavy metal was like about an orb and it's like five different stories that center around this orb well, that was what like the evil. fuck the gal's sewer guy he kind of looked like a friend i have <laughs> but it, what's interesting about this is that i didn't realize that i had seen that short years ago the exordium short okay by morgan Kalen. when did I, that just, come out when did that come out 2013 it says so okay so they waited it, like it took them about eight, eight years. years to finish yeah. this film so they were they were doing this film that whole time. It took them about eight years to make this movie, mm. and it, and you can see like there's not really much difference from eight years ago to now how the animation looked. I think it looks a little sharper though. Now, that, yeah, of course, that video was like a little like loose, but but I, I, I'll I'll still say that they they you can see that that's exactly where this. They got fucking Lucy from. Lawless and Patton Oswalt and shit. Yeah, that's but the thing good. is, they they did the whole film and then they asked them to dub over the voices. So yeah, those were different actors and stuff. Because I was like watching the movie, and I usually when you see a rotoscoped film, like the actor probably does the voice for the character and stuff like that. But obviously, Lucy oh, Lawless is doing. I, I Lucy see. Lawless does not look like the woman. It's not like a, it's not like a Schmeagel, uh, uh Andy Circus situation, right? Yeah, yeah which okay. is motion capture. So I'm trying to figure out who did the actual because she my, um, Lucy Lewis plays a character named Zod, um, which I kept thinking about that T-shirt company Izod, but it's Tzod. So she's playing Tzod, um, who's like um, they call a her like what a, witch. a swamp witch who like had her group of people and they there's this thing called, what is that that what is that grass called? It's like the a bloom. bush. <clears throat> the bloom is this like glowing green um, leaves that you can do magic I'd say it's with. Blue, not green. Aqua. Um, and and uh, it frames it by her getting attacked by Joe Mangianello, uh, who's like this um, brute. And he's working under a king, uh, and you can't you don't have to get used to any of these characters because they kind of all die every like ten minutes, and the new character is introduced. Yeah. The only person who really doesn't die is her and uh, fucking Ga- Garzul or whatever the fuck his name is, like the scholar dude, the main bad guy. <laughs> well, he does die at the end, but well, yeah, you I know, know what I mean, but, but um, yeah, and 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 Richard dies e- at the end. Richard E. Grant as the Guardian. Like, I didn't realize that was his voice. He's fucking great, Richard E. Grant. Yeah, that's like, why I said those, Classic Loki as my name. There's there's a funny thing online with Richard E. Grant. He's a British actor that you would instantly recognize because he's been in so much shit. The people that lo- the people know him from With Nail and I, which is, I think, about two writers that like are, are losers. Um, uh, a lot of people love that movie. So like, I think that's the movie that got him. Yeah, But it, there's a video of him because he, he was in the third Star Wars uh, new movies, um, okay. whatever they're called, the reboots, and yes. <laughs> he, he he talks about the movie. Right, this is like before it came out. He goes, "This movie is one of the greatest experiences of your life," and he looks like he's on t- uh, on the verge of tears. Uh-huh. And he's like, "What?" Like, and there's a comedian. Like, if you ever seen the show called Limmy's Show, I sent you a clip of uh, feathers and and steel. Which one's heavier? And the guy says, "Well, steel is heavy, but it's like the same weight. What's a ton of steel and a ton right. of feathers?" Right. I just did this with students, <clears throat> actually. Okay. And Limmy's like a guy going, "But they're not the same because you know steel's heavier." But he's like, "No, no, but they're both a ton." And he's like, he loses his mind. But he did an impression of Richard E. Grant, like, doing it. It's one of the fun... I'm going to send it to you after the show. It's one of the funniest things ever because he's <laughs> okay. just like, I can't believe how good this... And, you you know, you see the third Star Wars is, like, the stupidest movie. Anyway, back to this. So, Joe Manganiello, who's... Um, he's an actor that's, like, a big, like, muscular, good-looking guy. And he's, like, his foot is in and out of Hollywood. He ended up marrying Sofia Vergara, so anything I say is... He just new. plays the fucking guy that's only in the first five minutes of the movie. Yeah, and I thought he was going to come back in the movie somehow, but he just doesn't show he's up. Just he's, some, like, he's just some brute, that's all. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because like he's like a type of character. Like, if you watch a, a action movie and then they have, like... Imagine, you know the guy from from Commando? Remember Arnold Schwarzenegger? He throws that pole through that guy? Like that. I've actually never seen. You've never movie. seen Commando? Okay, so let's say like you're watching a movie, like a, an action movie, and there's like a bad like underling of a boss, yeah. and he shows up, and then you just never see him in the movie again, and so there's no sort of yeah. They kind of did foreshadow relief. that maybe he would take over as the king or something, but like this movie was very unpredictable. I did not know where it was going. Yeah, because it seems like they just kind of had ideas and they just dropped it for some reason. Like there were just characters would come and come and go. Who's I the, guess who's it was the... supposed to show like the endless. Pointless struggles, like they yeah, even said right. that. Like all of these struggles are completely pointless. Yeah. So who was the 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 the, the wizard guy? Gar, the guy that you, the Gar scholar. Gar Zul. Gar Sur. I I did like that. I did not see that coming because I thought he was just like Yo, a regular. I didn't see like, that coming at all. I thought it was gonna be like you know him and Tizad, sort of like you know 
fighting against, but then like the story goes in a completely different direction. Yeah, and um, I like. Yeah, that I thought they were gonna the... fight the king or something. That's what I thought. Right, you know, like that sort of traditional uh, fantasy story epic shit. But I, I like that it, he turned into the bad guy, you know? Like, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't see that coming. That was pretty cool. And it's so funny because as fast as they'll introduce a bad guy, they'll kill them off and then move on to the next part of the story. Like, that, the old man who was the leader of the the scholar people, yeah. he became bad, and then they just killed him off, so Gal Zul became the bad guy. I was like, what the... F-? It, it was like, imagine well, watching Gal-Zul, a condensed... Gal Zul... Sur- I don't know how to say his name. Uh, just use that guy to get out, basically. Jordan Douglas Smith, it says he's cast for the character. He did a great job. I thought he was awesome. As soon as the blood started flowing up in a giant ball to him, that was when I knew I really liked the movie. Yeah, yeah, no, it was awesome. Um, It's interesting. It's almost like if they condensed, um, um, what is that, Game of Thrones? So it's like a million storylines at once, and then they'll just like get rid of a storyline real quick and put it in. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, Lucy Lawless is great as Sod. Like uh, she's she's like I, knew uh, I recognized her voice too, and I was like, how do I how do I know this? I was surprised because like the actress. I don't know if the actress that played the body because they it's not like a traditional sort of fantasy woman body. You know, it's like a like a yeah, more I don't realistic see type of woman. About like who played the. Yeah, it seems like they just sort of maybe she didn't want to have her, but I, I can't imagine these people actually naked. I'm sure they had them like wear body suits and stuff like that to capture right. their bodies and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so I even liked Patton Oswalt in it. Like Patton Oswalt's a comedian that I never got his humor because he it's sort really of, it's, likes horror movies though. No, no, which is fine. He's kind of, uh, but I always look at him as like sort of an uh, elitist comedian, like that kind of highbrow uh, yeah. nerd humor, and I never get it. But he seems like a nice guy, so. Um, he uh, he's great as that evil like asshole king, and then his face yeah. gets half melted off, and then I was like, oh shit, he's gonna be like the bad guy. <laughs> he gets they get nope, rid of rules. I was like, like he's gone. Days. I was like, I was like, they kill him too. I was like, why do they introduce such yeah? Dope but I characters? think that, I think it really is the point of what she said later. It is or, where you, all this shit is pointless, and you realize that it's all pointless. So it's just like these endless pointless struggles. Yeah, and I think uh, Betty Gabriel, who plays one of the scholars, Faya Guara, she's like a Faya Gura. She's the Was that the one uh, who brought all the books? Yeah, her. And like I thought she was gonna be a main character and then she kinda just vanishes. You don't know what happens. I assume she's probably killed off or something. Because yeah. like, you know, he he ends up Galsura ends up like running a whole fucking kingdom with like people and Well, I mean they say at the end, which I didn't even realize I didn't know how long it was supposed to be, but like, apparently centuries went by between when oh, Okay, those, I didn't know, yeah. When the you don't really, Swamp Witch died and came You don't out. really got a you don't really get a sense of time. Because well, he, he said, he okay, said, out of all did. the centuries I've been alive, I didn't forget your face or whatever. Like, <clears throat> so even your guy, Larry, simple. even our yeah, guy, Larry, Larry Fessenden, Larry Fessenden is, is here. here too. <laughs> I don't know why we like Fa- Larry Fessenden. I don't get why, but it's just I never know how to say his name. Fessenden. I don't know. He's just in a lot of. Shit. I know. It's funny. I know. He's just like he seems like a cool dude, and he likes doing horror movies. So that's he pretty loves cool. horror movies. He has. His he own plays studio. the prophet. Of, he plays the prophet of doom, but I don't know who the prophet of doom was in the movie, unless he's that guy who was the uh, scholar guy that turned. He's evil. the one that old man that she gave money to. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, he's yeah, yeah. like, doom, doom. I, I'm pretty sure that's who <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was. Okay, you know, that makes sense. Uh, it's, it's gory, too. It's really gory yeah, film. Yeah, it's nice people getting gory. chopped up and hacked, it's nice. It's, like, super disgusting looking. Um, that, oh, even that last one uh, in the in the, the video you sent me on YouTube. So, wait, tell us about that. The, so, the, Exordium is a short film um, by Morgan Galen King. So, what I think is that Morgan Galen King probably wrote this because he, he, he has his own animation channel on YouTube. But he does, like, maybe three or five sort of uh, shorts on there. Mm-hmm. And they're similar to this. They completely. I think they brought the other guy in to corner. He the other guy is probably more of a, um, a regular director or something. So maybe he helped him kind of put it all together. But if you look at that channel, um, he did a short call Exordium, which is the Guardian. I guess origin. And the soundtrack is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, and and the the fucking design of the Guardian is so dope. Like that, it looks like a it looks like a mixture of like like a western like knight but also has like that sort of mexican you know like the sun behind him like he has that that emblem that's behind him he yeah. just looks fucking dope but it's on a um his animation i guess it was on a website called gorgonaut i don't know if that's like some sort of animation thing that you know sort of like how adult swim would like show animation and stuff like that but if you watch that short i guess it's the original guardian 
and like all these men are trying to fight him because everybody's starving off uh, because they have no food. And so it's like a little sword fight. And when you watch the actual movie, The Spine of Night, it, it says it shows stuff from that in there. So I got to wonder that maybe like it shows the guardian like get the bloom and like he turns into the guy and like by by the time we're watching the spine of night he's like his face is rotted off or he's he's so yeah. old that like his no, his nose fell off or something. And um but it's cool I like hope so I if get you that old one day that my nose falls off. <laughs> if if you watch um <laughs> Spine of Night, you know, watch Exordium. So you can watch either Exordium and then Spine of Night first. Uh but it was cool cuz I was like, "Oh shit." I liked like watching was, it after actually. Yeah, me too because I don't know anything about it. like they give you enough information of what the guardian is like he's you don't have to sit back yeah. and like kind of know what the fuck he's about but when you watch that little short it's actually pretty cool because uh, they, they have that scene I know where he's very, flying up in the air. it's very random but uh, I think there's a movie we watched called the, the girl with all the gifts about like these zombie yes the little girl right yeah odd things and uh -huh. and then at the end uh, you know the the girl like the one that's I guess like, spoilers. The, yeah. yeah, spoilers. Uh, the girl basically like releases the pods of one of these things, and to essentially the you world, just know yeah. that everyone will now be infected. So yeah, I was a little was bit what I got out of this. Yeah, I was kind of a little bit confused because it feels like they destroyed the bloom, but the bloom still kind of survived in the end. Well, that no, was my... she, the bloom is now everyone has access. I think that's okay. what she was going. That for. was my only, th but I think the but the whole no, I think the point was is that. It was gonna happen anyway because the Guardian wanted they wanted to destroy it so people wouldn't would um, not be afraid to live their life because they would just be so uh, you know the slave to the yeah all, they'll yeah. be slave to the fucking bloom and they wanted to destroy the bloom and that was the whole point but the bloom still succeeded in kind of being everywhere um, so but like, so I think what, what's your face Lucy Lawless's final act was to like make sure it, that but, everyone has access to yeah, the bloom okay. so now it's just like. Yeah, it is what it is. I, that that was that was my third thing that I had a problem was the ending was so abrupt. You know what I mean? Where she was like, look at the sky, and then like she just, but it was metal. Like, if you want to see like a more metal moment in a film, then that ending right there is like the most metal fucking shit I've ever seen in a movie. Where yeah, yeah, the bad guy is like cut in half, and like his zombie. It was so funny because you see how cheap. Like they only had like three actors to play the zombies, but it was still dope looking. And they're pulling him apart, and he's like literally severed in half, still alive. And she pulls out his heart and destroys it, and then the bloom like explodes everywhere, and then like it's very her, nice. Her body exploded, and her skull fucking flies into outer space. Like, there's nothing more fucking dope than that. Like, you don't see that in regular. <laughs> like, if you watch like Doctor Strange, there's no dope shit like that in Doctor Strange. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would love well, to see this. That would be appropriate. <laughs> I, I would love they call it the new Doctor Strange like a horror movie but it's just like it's a horror movie but like I would love to see don't shit like this don't give any spoilers no I'm not, I'm not I won't, I won't. There's, no, there's no skulls flying in that movie but um but like even like the part with the three the Sparrow Crow characters you know the people that are like bird people they wear like I, skull I masks I like their fucking designs they were, too they were dope too and I was like shit I want more of these characters too and then they, they get fucking obliterated in the movie but they you know it's still dope well I like guess the, their their part was basically to show how the Swamp Witch came back to life yeah so I mean it just all in all production wise like I kind it kind of like it's great that it's on Shudder and I'm glad that it's on Shudder but I don't know how many people have Shutter, and I. It would be amazing if more people saw this type of film. So this type. Of I film didn't even get, know it existed. Like so, I'm happy right. I saw it. I saw an animated film on Shutter. Um, I don't even know if it, it has to still be on Shutter. But I saw like a, it. It was like a South Park animation style. Like it looked like paper uh, uh -huh. drawings, and it's a zombie horror film with demons and shit. And it was fun. You know what I mean? I can't think of the name of that movie. But like Shutter has some cool, interesting film. Remember, it also had what was that movie that we saw? The the the, the uh, is um, uh, what was it about? The Wolf, House of the Wolf. Is that the one on Shutter too? Oh, the that one is fucking insane. I don't think that was on Shutter though. Wasn't that okay? But I mean, either way, Shutter has yeah. Great, House like, of the Wolf is one of the best like animated things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's like, such a bizarre film. So, although like, it's not plot wise, it's nothing. But the fucking uh, the visuals of it, oh my god, it's nightmarish. And we pot, we like that is the best movie ever. This like, movie too. Like the cool thing about uh, like Shutter has there's a movie coming out June of 2022 called um, Mad God uh, that I told you about by Phil Tippett. Okay. And that looks fucking insane because it looks like a tool video. The whole movie looks like a tool video, you know, from the back okay. then and stuff like that. But Spider Night 
is so fucking like it's just dope. It's just like you don't see this. You know what I mean? You don't yeah, see this, this is type a very, of film. Very good movie to watch. It, it, it's <laughs> and and especially like even if you're on if you're not on drugs or something like because I'm not saying I'm not advocating you can use drugs, but if you want to, and you watch this movie, it's just like um, you can get high even if you're like uh, it is on Shutter, the Wolf House, by the way. Um, oh, so, it is okay. Yeah, everybody should watch that. It's fucking amazing. Uh, what what was there anything that didn't work for you uh, that, for this movie? It's a little abruptly ending, and also that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, like you said, I wish they followed up on some of these plot points a little. Like I feel like there were a lot of loose ends, but like overall, this movie is fucking amazing. It's a yeah. solid like throwback movie that you don't see, and, and I I'm so like grateful that. Um, you know, Someone they gave him the money it. to do this. You know what I mean? They funded it. So, also the name of that that like like animation movie that I talked about was called Attack of the Demons. I think you would actually like. Is it like terrible animation? No, like it looks South like it's. Park, it's it, or is it like? No, it moves like South Park, like the old kind of paper animation. Well, it moves like South Park, but is the designs like terrible? Uh, like, y- could- they're kind of like. I guess it's the aesthetic of the artist. It's not necessarily my case to say that it's ugly. Like I think it probably okay. look better, but it's. It's just the fact that how cool it like moves and everything, and it's like just a, it's a serious like horror movie. Like it takes itself seriously. It's kind of goofy, but it's it's worth watching. It's called Attack of the Demons, okay. uh, and that's on Shutter. If you ever want to review that, I saw it already. So if you want to talk about, it, we could do that one too. But uh, this is uh, this I, I liked it a lot. So that was my only three things with this movie is that some of the um, it didn't there was no shadowing like because uh, when like. Tazad is walking through the snow. She has no footprints in the snow. And I'm like, wait a minute. So, but that's like small shit. That doesn't matter. Uh, the second thing is that the characters sort of dip in and out. And you don't really follow a character. So it feels sort of like um, one person telling a whole story, which Tazad is. Um, and the third one being that sort of abrupt ending. But how can you really follow is up? It Tazad or Zod? It's Zod. It's probably Zod. But that finale where like her skull flies into outer space and it just sort of like ends and you just see the bloom flying in the air like I would have liked to hear like at least one more you know a monologue or something because it was I, I didn't want to leave I wanted to like see a little bit Wasn't more. Was she cold being completely naked walking up a yeah, mountain? Yeah, she was. No. She was not nigging around. They, there's a lot of bush and uh, male genitalia in this movie, so it's there are a lot of genitals. A lot of male in genitals in this woman, and, and but it's dope. It's a dope fucking movie, and I really really enjoyed it. Especially for the type of film that it is, it's like it's very unique, and appreciate that Shutter, you know, is like yeah, let's let's put that on. You know what I mean? Like they didn't fuck around and they just put it on. It's gory, it's violent. Uh, there's cool characters. Yeah. It's very good voice acting by everybody. Everybody's great in this film. It's not some sort of cheap shit. There is not a moment of humor in this movie. <laughs> not, I'll say that there really isn't. It's it's very not serious. like one, not even one second of a slightly funny thing. So, uh, what rating would you give the Spine of Night 2022? Uh, I will give this a nine out of ten. Uh, nine out of ten. Uh, you. Hmm. I can't think of any. <laughs> Hold on. There's so much things oh. in this movie. Nine out of ten. Uh, yeah, I know that's the problem. There's too many things. It's like insane. Uh, okay. Nine out of ten, uh, you're walking up a mountain with your boobies out in your butt, but you're not cold because the bloom and the spirit of the bloom inside you is keeping your soul warm. If you have the magic of a god, would you just walk around nude yourself? Like, If I had the magic of a god, so many people I know. would be dead. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask that question. You <laughs> give a shit up. <laughs> Me too. Um, I would also give it a nine out of ten. Um being uh in your in your in your bloom bath partially nude as a dirigible tries to crash in there and and destroy you so you have to keep it away with your bloom powers and with that danny what's the final word bloom orlando